Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Seth Miranda. This is Adorama TV and this is the new Panasonic Lumix GH7, the newest addition to the Micro Four Thirds lineup, the GH series, which is a legacy staple in the industry. If you're watching this, you probably already know pretty much about it, but there's a lot of new stuff. And one of the biggest things is the new sensor, 25.2 megapixel Micro Four Thirds sensor, but it has phase detect autofocus points. And they're saying that it has increased dynamic range across the entire ISO range, which is great to see. But the phase detect autofocus points are a big deal, right? Because we finally got to see that in the S52, the S52X from Lumix, and now you're getting it here in the Micro Four Thirds line with the GH7. And that autofocus has gotten improved across the board. The subject detection has gotten another level to it. So let's say you want to, you know, shoot a vehicle, you can actually pick target the parts like windshield or instead of face you want body on a human being or something like that so you can actually tailor the autofocus subject detection another level if you need it to be which seems pretty great to me right so 25.2 megapixel micro four thirds which is great but you're getting up to 75 frames per second stills with a three second buffer which means you can hammer down and not have it fill up so quickly which is an advantage of micro four thirds right speed and file distribution in my opinion or processing rather you also get Lumix's high res mode, which has been known to be one of the best implementations of this type of technology where it will shoot four frames and get you up to a hundred megapixel image in camera. And that's handheld. That's not putting on a tripod. You're actually able to handhold it, get those shots and do a high res mode for a hundred megapixels in this little guy. And don't forget Panasonic has a really tight relationship with Leica. The collaboration continues with Leica monochrome picture styles in the GH7. So you can get an emulation of all those Leica grayscale, though that rich tone that they were able to get with their monochrome right here in the GH7. And another advantage of Micro Four Thirds is that we've always seen this format great for IBIS stability. You're getting seven and a half stops of IBIS in this camera, and you're also getting that boost feature for video, which we saw implemented in the firm update for the S52 and the S52X, which actually lets you move pretty quickly with the camera while filming and not getting a lot of shake, which is what you want to see. You want that smooth footage. Well, that's kind of an advantage of Micro Four Thirds, and you definitely have some great stability right here in the GH7. So the GH series has been known to be in the hands of video creators all over the place. Like it's a compact down cinema feeling camera, which is great, a lot of capability for video shooters out there. And this is no different, obviously. You're looking at a 17 by nine aspect ratio. You can get 5.7K ProRes RAW HQ internal at up to 29.97, which is cool. But if you wanna shoot cinema 4K, you can get up to 59.94, which is nice to see. But this is all internal, which is good, right? And you're able to do simultaneous proxies. So your video will go to the Safe Express card and the SD card, second card slot, will be your proxies, which obviously are tagged to go right in line with the uh, original recordings, which is nice and easy for video editing out there. And I know, I know you want the slow-mo, right? Well, you get 240p at 1080, but if you go to 4K, you're looking at 420 in 120 frames, which is nice to see, if an actual 4K 120 there. So you've got all those high frame rates to slow it down in post if you want. And don't forget you have open gate recording in some modes on this camera, which is awesome, right? Because you can basically record in 4.3 the whole sensor and then pick your aspect ratio later in post. So that way you have your own frame that you can crop however you want. And that's a lot of freedom. And we definitely like seeing that kind of stuff. And we also like seeing the ability to load in your own custom real-time LUTs. So while you're filming, you can actually see the closer to what it's gonna be in final edit so that you are, can kind of tell the way you're filming right there in the field and see what you're basically getting. Always very cool to have that. And this is all kind of workflow type stuff, right? But there's a lot more work type workflow stuff like being able to record to SSD out from the USB-C, sick. However, if you wanna do something like, I don't know, share to social really quickly, you can pair your phone with the Lumix Lab app, shoot and get it right to your phone and beam it to whatever social platform you want, which is good for all those people that are doing things for clients that want social stuff really quick, right there on the spot. Or if you're someone that's filming for your own channels, you just wanna go from a camera right to a platform, you've got it. And you're even able to live stream the platforms from this either wirelessly or tethered with a cable to the app. And you can do RTMP to various platforms and you can can even shoot to cloud. So the frame IO integration came along in the last firmware update for the S52 and the S52X, but you're getting it right here out of the box. And that's cool because you can actually film proxies and get them up to the cloud. So someone in the frame IO platform that's on your team can be editing them, or they can be sitting there for you when you get back, they're already there. And you have the original files saved to the Safe Express Type B and the SD card slot, like you normally would in recording. All this stuff is just to get faster and go from camera right to 
where you want it to go and that's sick. But the other thing that you're gonna wanna do is wonder about vertical video. I know, I know, breathe, breathe, it's okay. Vertical video is just a thing that a lot of clients are asking for or you yourself might be wanting for your own platforms that are going to something like Instagram, TikTok, Reels, whatever, or YouTube Shorts. One thing that I find to be super annoying is if a camera doesn't tag it as vertical video, I spend more time taking all my clips and rotating them, it'll tag it as vertical as soon as it senses the camera's filming in vertical. It's cool, breathe hard all you want, it's definitely a time saver in my opinion. Everything on this seems to really keep in mind where it's going in an end position for what you're filming, just making it faster, easier, and you're just creating more and getting more for your client or more for yourself. Another new thing that I feel is a game changer and probably a lot of you do as well is that with the adapter for XLR mic, the DMW XLR2, you put that on, you can now record 32-bit float audio to the file in your camera. No longer do you have to record it separately and put it together and 32-bit float is the game changer, right? That means that you don't have to worry about your levels too much at the time of recording. There's so much range in 32-bit float that you can recover, whether it's too hot or too low, you're able to get a lot out of that audio file and now it's just right there, done out of the camera to the file. Really, really saves a lot of time and definitely will save you in a hard spot and I think a lot of you know what I'm talking about. This new XLR adapter will give you three inputs, two XLR and one 3.5 millimeter, which is nice to get that extra input. 3.5 millimeters gives you versatility on your mic options. So as you can tell, this camera's been designed for hardcore video work out there and long run times. I mean, this is unlimited record time. Always cool to see that and it can mitigate heat really well. It's got a built-in fan and it's designed internally to really handle heat dissipation. Very cool to see, but I know what you're saying. What's the point of having unlimited record times if it doesn't stay powered? Because you're gonna use that USB-C port for something, all the versatile things I just mentioned, including the recording to SSD. Well, don't worry, they got you covered because they got the new DMW DCC18, which will actually be a dummy battery going into the battery chamber and leave a USB-C input out underneath that way so you can run power via USB-C to a dummy battery rather than using the native port. So you can use the port for whatever reason you want with data transfer or however, and still get power to it and run that power for extended use time, live streaming, extended record times, whatever, you've got it handled. Overall, the GH7 feels very, very familiar if you're familiar with the GH series as a whole. It definitely feels like that robust Lumix can take anything durability, which they absolutely have a track record for. I mean, this is a solid body right here. But if you wanna talk about what's going on here, we do have the variable tilt screen that also flips out, which is great because it can actually not interfere with the cables that you're gonna have shoved into this thing for all the capability we were talking about, like your HDMI cable. Speaking of HDMI, you've got a full-size HDMI port here. Yeah. And a USB-C port for all that stuff we just talked about. Above that, you've got your headphone jack to monitor your audio, which you definitely want to see, and a mic jack on top of that if you want to record directly into the camera with an external mic. On the other side, you've got the dual card slot, C Express Type B and an SD card slot, which is nice to see. It shows that the Lumix series overall is kind of making it ubiquitous with what kind of memory formats they're using. And C Express Type B is definitely becoming a format that is being adopted all industry-wide as well. You know, it's, it's just that camera that you know. It's that GH that you definitely are aware of that you picked up before. Now you're picking up with even more capability, more versatility, faster workflows, and a lot of things thought out about it. And I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some firmware updates. We've been seeing Lumix really get aggressive with supporting their cameras with more features and more things worked out with firmware updates to their users. We just did a video about the S52, S52X. We'll put a link to that down below so you can check out the firmware update that happened there. But keep your eye on this in general just to see what's going on with Lumix and what they're putting into their cameras. If you guys have any questions about hardcore specs, all the data and all the info is down below in the links. Go check that out, but if you have any specific questions, I'll do my best to answer it. Hit me with a comment. Don't forget to hit like. It really helps out this video and this channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell so you get notified when we put out videos like this. We put them out every day and you don't want to miss out on it. So we appreciate all your support out there and we'll see you on the next one. Later.